Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I'm actually out caught in traffic. Uh, had to take care of some things on the complete opposite side of town. Uh, if you're not from Houston and you're not familiar with Houston, the other side of town has an entirely different meaning than in almost every other city in the United States. While New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago have uh, more people, and we're closing in on Chicago, and we'll probably overtake them uh, this decade, uh, become the third largest city in the nation. When it comes to land expanse and how it's spread out, it's crazy. Uh, you can literally drive from one side of Houston to the other side for an hour and still be in Houston. Um, it's crazy. But anyway, that's uh, something uh, that I'm in the middle of doing now, and it's traffic, so it's just wonderful. Um, par for the course. Look, we just finished um, a, a segment of The Teachers, an episode of The Teachers, uh, where we interviewed... Uh, a sister, uh, Stephanie Covington, who lost her grandson, uh, Malik Jackson, in 2020 uh, to senseless violence. And we tell her story and we talk about her journey and her grief and how she's dealing with her grief, her frustration with the system, her frustration with the community, her frustration with the fact that Nobody's holding these violent offenders accountable, uh, whether it's the police department, whether it's the district attorney's office, whether it's other black men in the community. And I've been talking about this for some time. I've been talking about this, uh, man, what, 15, 20 years now? Definitely at least 12 on YouTube. Um, I mean, early in the game, I've been talking about this. This isn't something that's new to me. I've been studying this uh, for years. I've been writing about it for years. I've been speaking on it for years. I've created programs like Black Men Lead. I've worked with my wife to help with young black women with uh, restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters. Uh, we've done other types of programs in the black community. I am consistently being called to help people with grief, with trauma, uh, with dealing with childhood abuse issues across the spectrum. And that's going to be a continued focus, but we are going to have to make up in our mind that we're actually going to be engaged in creating solutions and overcoming problems. One of the biggest issues or things that get under my skin is uh, inept activity or empty activity something doing something but doing nothing uh i tell people all the time in business when, when when we're on the business side of things when i'm dealing with clients potential partners potential uh whatever I tell them all the time i don't have a problem with the meeting but one thing i do have a problem with is having meetings so that we talk and then we set other meetings uh, i think there has to be a complete a specific agenda worked out at the meeting. They have to be actionables put on the table at the meeting. Those actionables have to be assigned to different parties at the meeting. And that needs to be a time that when we come back, we can talk about what has been done by way of uh, fulfilling and carrying out and executing those actionables. Just sitting up and talking about something is not why I'm here. Uh, sitting up and having intellectual uh, debates about something we have no intent on fixing is not why I'm here. I'm here specifically to be a part of the solution. I'm here specifically to empower my people. I'm here specifically to make something happen. And that and the thing is, far too many of us aren't, aren't, aren't committed. Far too many of us aren't invested. I challenge you, go watch that video. Listen to the pain in that woman's voice. Now multiply that by at least a million. That's how many grandmothers are out there going through uh, some type of strain. That's how many people that are out there 
that are under siege in their community. There's so many people out there dealing with things that can be changed, things that can be fixed, things that can be addressed, but we're too busy in ourselves. We're too busy step back. We're too busy being at a distance, a distance to really truly uh, be what's necessary to make a difference. You know, I was talking uh, after we finished the episode, I stayed on with Dr. Blanchard and we talked for a while, something we've been doing for years. And both of us are frustrated at just how disconnected our people are. You know, some people are tuning in to listen, not a whole lot. Uh, and like um, Stephanie Covington said in the video, in, 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 the, in, the, in the interview, uh, everybody's focused on the wrong thing. A million people are tuning in to hear somebody's marital, marital business. A million people are tuning in to hear gossip and hear what's happening with the latest celebrity. But when it comes time to put in the work, to put in the energy, to put in the effort about changing the lives of the people who don't have voices, changing the lives of the people who are suffering and struggling, changing the lives of the people who are under the foot of oppression, uh, it, it, it's minimal. I have people all the time saying, hey, hey doc, you know, I don't understand why you only have 7,000 subscribers. Well, before I got Google slapped by YouTube, that was a time that we almost had 20, uh, 20,000 subscribers. But that still is nowhere near people who have 200,000 subscribers. 200,000 subscribers to watch them show off their clothes, 2,000 subscribers, 200,000 subscribers to watch them gossip and talk. I look at a lot of the crap that's on YouTube, just YouTube alone, and I'm, uh, because I promote my business, I do so many things, I'm on a number of different platforms and have multiple accounts on certain platforms like Facebook and I also YouTube, and it amazes me some of the things that people have these large followings for. You know, talking crap about somebody, uh, you know, exposing people's personal business, just things that, you know, have no intrinsic value, brings no real true growth to uh, the public, the society, to any community, including the black community, but they're out there doing it because guess what? They get that many followers, they get sponsors, they get ad revenue, they get all of these things that make them money for doing absolutely nothing. That's the, that's what we come to now. Absolutely nothing. Now, the question is, what are we going to do? The question is, what are we going to do? That's my question. What are we going to do? And I would like you to just weigh in and tell me, what are we going to do? Because nobody seems to be invested. Nobody seems to be uh, in a... In a uh, and I say nobody, obviously I don't mean nobody because there's some people out there putting in work. There's some people out there that are invested. I'm talking about on a grand scope and from a grand scheme of things, far too few to actually make a difference, to make an impact. And the, the number of cases I get on my desk alone uh, is mad crazy. And I'm fielding them as fast as I can uh, with as much energy and effort as I can. But I just look at it and I go, we need to do something. We need to do something on a grand scale. Um, you know, with a lot of this violence, I've already given you uh, the solution to that. I mean, put together and packaged well. Can't get the support for it. I've told you about Black Men, Black Men Lead, Right of Patches program now. Years on end, can't get support on it. Properly socializing these boys reduces the risk of violence dramatically, but it's not free. It, you, I can be in one place at one time and I can deal with one kid at one time or maybe 10. We're talking millions of kids. We've got to do something different. I have the plan. It can be scaled, but we need support. For those of you who are serious about doing this, get with me. For those of you who want to see something happen, support the work we're doing. 
that's the first beginning. If you can't get out there and you can't make it happen, you don't know what to do. Support the work of the people who are putting skin in the game, blood, sweat, and tears in the game, sitting up and going. I mean, I was contacted this week. I was telling Dr. Bell, I was contacted this week alone by four women uh, suffering from incest. That's just this week alone. I, and this is constantly. It's never a break. But anyway, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Um... Uh, I got to get home and take the uh, 17 year old to work So that's it I just had to drop in and talk to you about that But definitely First and foremost go check out that interview uh, With Stephanie Covington Because there are some things you really need to see And hear on there Also show some love Go into the description box Of this video And you will see how you can give and support the work we're doing Much love And I'm out of here